Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to our morning devotions. And I am glad to invite you back to my office where we open the Word of God and study uh, the things that impact our everyday lives. And today we're going to continue looking at something that I believe to be an extremely relevant portion of Scripture and I believe really speaks to the front headlines of the news today. And I think it helps us to draw perspective and to have understanding. And so let me invite you to go back to Proverbs chapter 11 uh, as we continue on in our study there uh, for this week. As you're doing so, I want to remind you to be in prayer for Beverly North. Uh, her daughter uh, went home to be with the Lord last week after a battle with cancer, and the memorial service will be held uh, downtown at the Salvation Army Citadel at 5.30 this evening. I know there's a few folks from church that are going to support uh, Beverly, and I'll be there and participating in the service, but uh, I wanted to encourage each and every one of you to uh, be in prayer for her. I can't imagine uh, at all what it would be like to, to lose a child, and I hope that I never have to. And, uh, and then be in prayer for Stella Maldonado. Uh, her brother went home to be with the Lord this week, and uh, the service is on Saturday, and uh, Stella is there with family in New Mexico, and uh, please keep her in your prayers, as well as Debbie Parker. It was her uncle, and she'll be uh, traveling out to New Mexico for the service and pray that the Lord would give journey mercies to her. Still others in our church family continue to um, deal with the loss of loved ones, continue to pray for the Berg family, uh, and also for Audrey Andrews, uh, who suffered a loss in her life here recently and continue to pray for God to strengthen Marianne Neumuller, who has uh, been in the hospital and is home now, but uh, needing to regain her strength. And uh, there are others that are dealing with different uh, problems and issues in their life, and uh, we just need to continue to pray for those. Also, don't forget to pray for Brother Gene Sharp, our missionary whose wife, about five and a half weeks ago, was taken in an automobile accident and leaving him and five children. And uh, I've been able to, to keep touch with Brother Sharp and try to encourage him, but it's been devastating to him. Uh, she was uh, a beautiful mother, ministry companion, wife, friend, and uh, she was just a dynamic Christian with a beautiful testimony and uh, had just turned 45 years of age and, uh, and taken from us suddenly. And so... Please pray that the Lord would give a great comfort there. And then continue praying for the Lighthouse projects that are ongoing. Uh, we have a number of people that are involved with helping. And uh, once again, last night, there were a number of folks here until very late, till about quarter to 10 or so. And, and then now there are folks back down here and, and working. And there's so much going on. Uh, we're cleaning all of the seats in the auditorium. We're uh, uh, renovating the, the Fellowship Hall restrooms. We're uh, finishing the renovation of uh, the 5,400 square foot uh, educational space upstairs, 13 classrooms, two bathrooms, and two hallways, three hallways actually. And, uh, and God is allowing us to do so because of faithfulness of God's people to pray and to give and to have hands to work and uh, some of this was done by uh, those who are skilled laborers that are contracted. Others are skilled laborers that were volunteering their labor. And uh, most all of it was made possible because of the grace of the Lord and the generosity of you, the people of God at Freeway. And as you continue to give towards that project, we'll continue to prepare the facility uh, to be ready to put the pedal to the metal as we endeavor to reach the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so uh, let's be in prayer for all of these things. And uh, I'd like for us to just begin by going to the Lord in prayer this morning. May we, Father, today we are so thankful that you love us. God, thank you for the hope of heaven. 
And Lord, even as we hear of our friends and loved ones losing those that they know and love, God, we pray that you would provide comfort and may they take great comfort in knowing that their loved ones are with thee. Lord God, I pray for those in our church family that are facing Thanksgiving and Christmas for the first time without someone very special to them. I pray that you would undergird them with thy strength. Lord, we would also be in prayer for our church as we endeavor to bring you glory and reach our world for Jesus Christ. Help us to be wise and to have strength. Would you protect us? Lord, keep us from harm and Lord, enable us to with uh, the power of the Holy Spirit of God, uh, give testimony to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Lord God, we pray now that you would bless these moments that we have together in the study of the word. And Lord, I pray that we would just receive from thy Holy Spirit the sense of what it is that you have laid before us this morning. Use me now, I pray in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. We are picking it up here in verse number 16 where we left off and we finished up here uh, yesterday and I'll just read verse 16 and continue on a few verses. The Bible says, a gracious woman retaineth honor and strong men retain riches. The merciful man doeth good to his own soul, but he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. The wicked worketh a deceitful work, but to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. As righteousness tendeth to life, so he that pursueth evil pursueth it to his own death. They that are of a froward heart are abomination to the Lord, but such as are upright in their way are his delight. Though hand join in hand, the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. As we uh, take the next step in, in our study here in Proverbs chapter 11, we notice that the Bible tells us here that the merciful man doeth good to his own soul, but he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. You know, I think there's something to be said about a kind and a gentle spirit, someone who is merciful. I love the words of Jesus in Matthew chapter five that say, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. Um, folks, you can see it all throughout the canon of scripture, the principle that proves you will reap what you sow. If you sow seeds of kindness, in the end, kindness is what you'll receive. If you sow seeds of anger, then you will invoke the hostilities of those that you are angry towards and you will uh, stir up the pot and uh, really till it boils over. And I believe that we've got to understand that God is calling us to be kind and gentle, to be merciful in our spirit. Uh, I'm going to tell you that uh, I know many people who have come to a good position on certain doctrinal issues, and they're very dogmatic in their belief system, as am I, but they carry it to the extent of being combative about it. And folks, I'm just going to tell you something. Uh, I don't believe that that is the spirit of Jesus Christ. Um, I've, I've done a fair amount of street preaching in my life. I've, I've preached in about every place you can imagine, in prisons, in jails, on street corners, in hospitals, in public offices, in homes, in parks, in churches, uh, just about everywhere you can imagine, in the mountains, by riverside, uh, on basketball courts and gymnasiums, uh, in convalescent homes, uh, in hospitals. I'm just saying I've preached about everywhere there is to preach. And I've done a lot of street preaching and I've been with others that do. And there have been times where I've gone out with others that preached on the street 
And I determined that although I appreciated and respected the zeal of those who were willing to take a public stand, I could no longer identify myself with the spirit of their presentation. Oftentimes, uh, folks would go to a place where they knew there would be a lot of partiers, revelers. Maybe they would go to an area that was filled with uh, homosexuals um, and they would hold signs that say, turn or burn. And, uh, you know, God sends sinners to hell. And I mean, just, you know, and, and they'd have pictures of flames and people falling into the flames. And, and then they would stand up and they would rail towards others. And, you know, I'm going to tell you something. The only thing I ever saw come out of that was hostility. I never saw one single person that was steeped in that lifestyle respond in a way that would draw them to, that would indicate they were being drawn to the Lord. But I did see people that were angry. I did see people that were hostile toward the gospel because of the spirit of what was being communicated. Now, folks, I have learned through the years, as I know many of you have also learned, that it is possible to say almost anything that you need to say to almost anyone that you need to say it to if you say it in the right way. If we're merciful in our spirit, you know, folks, it's one thing to say, this God, God's going to send all the homosexuals straight to hell. And if you don't repent, you're going to burn. Now, is that a true statement? Maybe. You, you, could, you could see where that someone would say that. Or you could stand up and say, folks, I want you to know something. That God hates all sin. He doesn't like the sin in my life any more than he does the sin in yours. But that same God died to pay the price for the sin of homosexuality as he did for the sin of adultery, as he did for the sin of pride, as he did for the sin of deceit and idolatry. And so what we all must understand is that the ground is all level at the foot of the cross. We all come to Jesus the exact same way. God is not more repulsed by one sinner than another. He loves them all. And the only candidates for grace are the undeserving. And the Bible says where sin abounded, there did grace much more abound. Now folks, um, if you were in a sinful lifestyle and not happy about it, you were walking down the street and you heard someone mercifully calling you to Jesus like that, I wonder how you'd feel about it. Or if you heard someone saying, God's going to send you straight to hell, turn or burn, I wonder how you'd respond to that. You see, that may seem like an extreme illustration, but I want to simply tell you, it highlights the merciful man doeth good to his own soul. Look, I've seen people that, that are unkind, they're not merciful, and when they go home, they don't have any sense of joy or fulfillment about what they just did. Now, I'm going to tell you something. When we choose to be kind to others, when we choose to be merciful to others, you know what? There's going to be an influx of good things in your life spiritually emotionally, and yes, physiologically. And so the reverse is true, and this chapter gives us many contrasts, and that is that he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. Now, most bitter people that I know have a little element of cruelty that is admixed with that bitterness. Now, if we're honest, all of us have probably battled bitterness on some level in our lives at some point in time towards someone for something. 
I imagine right now the Holy Spirit is bringing an instance or a person to your mind where you acknowledge, yeah, I was dealing with some bitterness there. And if you think back to that point, praise the Lord that you're not there anymore, but I'll just imagine that not only did you have bitter emotions, but uh, there was just a little element where that you would have given half a chance, been cruel to your persecutor. You would have kind of gotten even with them, sort of gotten back at them. But the Bible says, he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. Do you know the Bible tells us in the book of, of uh, Hebrews and chapter number 12, something very interesting about the subject of bitterness. It says in verse 14, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord, looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God. Now what that means is to fail to impart the grace of the Lord to others, to show them the kindness of God manifested through your life, though perhaps undeserved. And then what it says is if we do that, it says, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled. You know what the Bible is teaching us here? Something that we have had to learn the very hard way. And in so doing, we've proven that God is true. And that is that bitterness hurts you more than the one that you are bitter towards. It troubles you. Do you know what I've discovered? There are a lot of people that are bitter towards someone over something. And the person they're bitter at is sleeping great at night. <laughs> They don't even know it. They're not even aware of what it was that they did that upset you so horribly. And yet you're grinding on it. You're talking about it. You're thinking about it. You're mulling it over. And, uh, and you're getting stomach aches and headaches and muscle aches and hypertension and cramps and diarrhea and every other type of physical ailment uh, because you're so worked up and stressed out and, and you can't get over it. And you know what? Guess who's being troubled by that? It's not the person that said something and didn't even know what they said that you went to seed on, became bitter about, became cruel in your spirit over. What happened was you, you troubled your soul, but the fact is that um, you troubled your flesh. You troubled your flesh. I mean, there's a physical consequence to us contemplating cruelty with malice in our hearts and bitterness in our hearts. There's a physical consequence that comes upon us. And, uh, and, and I believe that uh, when it says, if we, uh, when you stand praying, forgive, for if you will not forgive your brother, neither will your heavenly Father, which is in heaven, forgive you. And I believe that in that situation, that's granting the, the temporal forgiveness. And if we don't, there's going to be physical consequences that follow that. It'd be the consequences of a breakdown in the relationship that will abide until we relent and forgive. The consequence of um, hypertension, stomach aches, and all of the varied things that we mentioned that will come upon the flesh, not to mention the fact that when we begin to show unkindness and cruelty and, and act out bitterly towards others, we invite their hostilities. And so folks, I'm, I'm just telling you that the Bible tells us that the merciful man doeth good to his own soul, but he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. You know, there have been times in my life where I was under assault, I was under attack. You could probably say the same thing. And you know, I held on to Proverbs chapter 16, verse seven, which says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Let me say that again. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. So look, what are people saying? <laughs> Why are they saying it? 
Here's what you do, okay? Let them say it. And you just do what God would have you to do. You just live the life of Jesus. And pretty soon, you know what'll happen? It won't be fun beating up on a baby kitten. <laughs> it won't be fun tormenting a sparrow. It won't be fun flogging a baby fawn. Someone who's just gentle and harmless. It, it, it won't be fun for that person to continue. But if you continually add fuel to the fire, if you continually are upset with them and respond in kind, you know what they're gonna do? They're gonna keep it up. The Bible says where no wood is, the fire goeth out. So if we don't keep fanning and feeding those flames, eventually they're gonna die on their own. And so let me say to you that there's nothing wrong with you just deciding, I'm going to haul off and be a, a kind-hearted person and demonstrate the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I may not like this person, but God has commanded me to love them. And so what I'm going to do is be honest before God and just say, God, I don't really much like this person. And I, I really don't want to be kind to them. But God, if you want to show them how much you love them, then God, I'll be the vessel through which you can show your love to them. Because I can't do it, but if you want to do it, I'll be your vessel. I'll be your hands. I'll be your heart. Lord, I don't feel like it. I don't particularly care for this person, but I know you do. And if you want me to be the means by which you show this person how much you love them, then I surrender. You know, when you come to a place like that, it's liberating to you. Some of you are holding on to hurt. You're holding on to the bitterness. You're holding on to the cruelty in your spirit. And not only are you troubling your, your soul, but you're troubling your flesh. You know what? I think there's a lot that could be overcome if we just decided to live a gentle, kind-hearted life. Not always, uh, you know, skeptical, always jaded in our worldview. Every once in a while, just have the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm gonna tell you something, okay? I was born in the night, but it wasn't last night, okay? Um, I pastored and I labored in the inner city of California for many years. I'm, I'm talking about in bad places, um, this is kind of like a resort destination compared to where I served for many years, uh, literally. And uh, even though many perceive this to be an inner city ministry right here on the interstate, the fact is that, you know, everybody's got a story, but not everybody's trying to pull the wool over your eyes. And uh, the other night, uh, I forget when it was, we were... Uh, oh, uh, it was in Sunday school. We were talking about Hebrews 13 and it says, uh, be not care careful to, enter, uh, uh, to entertain strangers. Um, and then it says, um, for many have entertained angels unaware. And, and the fact is, we don't know who those people are. And, and I, what I want to say to you is that um, I never want to get to the place where I'm mean-spirited to everybody that has a story. That I don't have time to listen to the story and I don't care about what they're going through because everybody's working an angle, all right? I don't want to be that guy. I want to be kind. I want to show some dignity. And you know what? Over the last 40 years of ministry, I've had people snooker me out of 20 bucks or... 50 bucks. I've had people take me to the cleaners for a grand. I've had people take me to the cleaners for $500. I've had people lie to me, be unkind to me, take advantage of my kindness. And people look at me and say, you know, come on, man, you need to toughen up. And, you know, listen, I wonder if that's what you're going to say when we stand before the Lord. Man, I wish I was tougher on people. I wish I was more jaded. I wish it, I wouldn't let those homeless people get over on me. 
You think that's what the Lord's going to say? Good job, man. You're going to be rewarded for that. No. You know, I'm going to tell you. Yeah, I probably have been taken advantage of. But you know what? I'll still receive the reward because I did it with a pure heart and for the right reason. And I did it with the right intention. And God sees that. And even though the person abused my kindness, I still gave a cup of cold water in Jesus' name. There's the same reward for that as if the person came back around, got saved, and became a member of the church. And so I've got to determine that I am going to be that kind-hearted man because if I'm not, I'm just going to be a crank and a crab and I'm going to be mean to everybody. I know people like that, don't you? I know Christian people like that. And, and they give the rest of us a bad name and I hate it. I don't want to do that. I hope you don't want to do that either. And so, listen, the merciful man doeth good to his own soul. In contrast, he that is cruel troubleth his own flesh. Verse 18, the wicked worketh the deceitful work, but to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. And what we find really... Um, the the work that the wicked person is doing is in the context and in, in, in the Hebrew it's talking about sowing and reaping. What he's doing is he's sowing seeds of wickedness. The contrast here is to him that soweth righteousness shall be a sure reward. So in other words, you're going to reap what you sow. Has, it's been kind of a recurrent theme through this study that those that are wicked and lawless, they're going to do a deceitful work. and uh, But the righteous, they're going to receive a reward for the work that they do. So when you're wicked, when, when it's all about you and you're trying to get over on somebody, uh, when you're not upright in your motives, intentions, or your manner, then what can you expect to see come from that? Well, I'll tell you, nothing, nothing. In the end, you'll have absolutely nothing to show for it. But when you determine to live out the righteous life of Jesus, show forth his grace and kindness to all those that you encounter, there is a sure reward. You know what that means? You can take that to the bank. God is going to honor that work. Folks, let's today determine with kindness, with mercy, to walk uprightly and to go out there today and have a shining testimony for Jesus. And let's make somebody's day and in the process, maybe impact there forever. Wouldn't that be awesome? I hope you have a wonderful day.